capacity to assist uh, survivors of gender-based violence to, 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 to participate in this digital world, which will enable them to have more power when it comes to prevention, as well as um, post-trauma um, uh, uh, implementation. So that, and then um, having said that also, it's also important to note that the other area that the department is focusing on is on economic empowerment of women. Because one of the key areas that we have found in the work that we have done is that there are also women that are economically abused, that they are in, an, in a situation where they are financially dependent on the person that is abusing them or the domestic um, in, uh, violence scenario that they find themselves in, um, uh, in uh, doesn't enable them to move out of that situation. So that is why we feel that one of the opportunities within the whole fourth industrial revolution process is around looking at how we are able to enable women to become economically empowered so that they are able to then have better opportunities to release themselves from um, uh, situations of abuse. But I would like to note that the other side of the coin is also true, where technology in terms of the fourth industrial revolution can also enable um, the country to do better reporting, to do better data analysis of what is happening with regards to women in, in and other um, survivors of gender-based violence in relation to how they are um, supported, how they are um, how they are provided with um, the, the necessary support post the trauma, but also what preventative measures can be put in place. So the, 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 the third point on this um, presentation uh, slide is relating to how the fourth industrial revolution can enable us. And as a department, we have a number of programs where we are looking at how to do that. The fourth area that we um, wanted to indicate is that there will be, there, there has been um, some programs that we've implemented, and those were the programs that we were referring to in the earlier slides, but that we believe that there is an opportunity to increase and to enhance these programs so that we are able to support, especially the work that is done with regards to the, the that will be done rather with regards to the domestic violence bill, because in the domestic violence bill, there is an expansion with regards to the kind of um, ways that reporting can happen. There's also a need for online registration of, of, of um, information. And in that regard, there is a need for the department to look at how do we support some of those initiatives and noting that we've already implemented some programs to this extent, but we would need to review them and look at how do we expand them. And then with regards to the department, as the acting DG indicated earlier, we have a number of state-owned um, entities that report to parliament through our minister. And we believe that um, in the current situation, these entities can play a big role with regards to the awareness that can be raised around um, the, the provisions in the bills, but also with regards to the providing of access to women to services in relation to digital technologies. For example, um, the, uh, the Electronic Institute for um, Media, uh, NAMISA, is our training institute, and they, are, they would be able to provide training um, to uh, um, uh, persons that are affected uh, by this uh, uh, gender-based violence. Secondly, we have um, the South African Broadcasting Corporation that is our public broadcaster that is able to provide awareness. So in this area, uh, what we are trying to emphasize is the fact that we have state-owned entities as the department which we are working with and which are able to enable us to, to support the provision in the in the gender-based um, violence bills that has been um, presented and that is being discussed by the committee. Um, you can move to the next slide, please. Um, may you please move to the next slide?
Thank you. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, as I indicated earlier, um, committee members, I have a vision impairment, so it takes longer for me to uh, realize that you've moved. So in terms of the, the, the second, um, the, 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 the next point with regards to readiness, the DCT has also um, the responsibility to oversee the implementation of getting the country ready for the 4IR compliance, as I indicated earlier. But um, Taking this a bit further, in relation to 4IR compliance, we have looked at developing a number of um, instruments with regards to this. And one of them include the digital um, future skills strategy, where we are going to be um, skilling um, South Africans. And we believe that this is one of the areas where we can also support the, the implementation of the bills through providing um, um, citizens with the necessary digital skills so that they are able to take processes forward. The other area with regards to 4IR is with regards to the new technologies that will be introduced, such as um, artificial intelligence, where we are able to utilize that, especially with regards to data collection, as I, as I noted earlier. And then thirdly, there are also the areas where we are looking at using augmentative and virtual reality in terms of technologies. And these technologies can be deployed, especially with regards to providing support during um, reporting um, processes for um, survivors of gender-based violence, as well as in strengthening the work that the courts are doing with regards to enabling um, people to, re uh, to, to um, testify during um, incidents in incidences where uh, cases are brought uh, before the court. So in terms of 4IR compliance, what, what is meant there is essentially looking at how we can use the, all the new technologies that, will, that is introduced as a result of the fourth industrial revolution to enable the, 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 the structures such as um, the various government departments, civil society, as well as business to enable them to utilize those technologies to prevent gender-based violence, to report gender-based violence, and to support processes when the, the, um, the cases has been brought to the, to, to the, um, to the courts. Then um, just to indicate that in terms of the, the, the bills, from our side, we are um, confirming that there is a great opportunity as far as communication and digital technologies are concerned with regards to supporting the implementation of the bills. And as a result, we um, believe that we are ready to do so and that we are able to provide that coordinating support. Noting that communications and digital technologies is an overarching, it's a cross-cut cutting matter. It, everything and anything that we do has a component of technology in it. And as a result, we um, believe that that opportunity needs to be exploited and we need to look at how are we able to enable other government departments as well as um, state-owned entities and civil society to be able to utilize this opportunity that is presented to us through communications, which is formal communications such as through um, broadcasting, radio, and so on, but also digital technologies, which is the issues relating to the new technologies that we, that we um, are referring to. And then we also said that there is a need to influence um, some of the content of the bills to look at these areas, because when we reviewed the amendments, we realized that there isn't a lot in the bills that talks to issues relating to um, this new technologies, which is understandable because obviously um, the bills deals with the soft issues relating to um, abuse and um, violence and how um, survivors of these trauma needs to be supported and so on. But we, we, we would like to note that um, we, we think that we, we need to work on how do we incorporate issues. For example, um, one of the things that the bills are silent on, which is the original acts are also silent on those, are the issues relating to online violence and um, cyber violence, 
where women are also um, abused online or through technology they are abused and these are some of the things that we are referring to when we when we when we talk about influencing the the content of the book then with regards to um the um the issues relating to um the electronic communications um the electronic um communication service providers so in this in this instance we are basically saying that we need to look at how do we ensure that electronic communications um, uh, providers supports the processes and especially in courts in, in terms of the information dissemination as well as the um, provision of support to the survivors of gender-based violence during the, the, the court processes because there is a lot of opportunity for that and as the department we have done um, we have worked in in some of these areas where we have enabled um, we, where we have provided rather information on how um, electronic communications can support these processes and then lastly um, in terms of the the readiness we also felt that with regards to the issues relating to sexual offenses um, there, there is a need for understanding um, sexual offenses that that in terms of um, it can also be perpetrated online, as I mentioned earlier. And in this regard, we support um, all the 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 the, the um, presentations that have been made by other government departments around how online platforms can be utilized uh, more effectively. And as the DCDT, we would like to provide um, the relevant support in regards to strengthening these. Um, uh, platforms that will enable uh, victims of sexual offense or sexual abuse online to have more opportunity to report, but also to be to feel safe when they are providing um, um, information with regards to what has happened to them. Because in this instance, we, we have to re remember that the perpetrator is not necessarily um, uh, always known um, they are not known as in the person doesn't know who it is, but they are not seen. They, they can hide behind a, a computer screen in terms of the, the when they are perpetrating the, the, the abuse. And then also it is important to note that in some instances, um, especially sexual offenses, it occurs, it starts actually, it commences with um, the use of technology, where young women, young children are lured into relationships or discussions around um, uh, um, uh, sexual interactions online, and then eventually it obviously moves to offline um, uh, in interaction in some cases where that then leads to human trafficking. And that is why we felt that there's a, a very uh, important uh, opportunity there to look at how do we support um, uh, uh, online platforms to enable uh, victims of sexual abuse online to be supported. Uh, you may move to the next slide, please. The concluding remarks. So in terms of the concluding remarks, um, we would like to just emphasize the fact that as the department, we are in, we are one of the departments that is expected in terms of the, the president's announcement around the um, national strategic plan on um, combating gender-based violence and femicide. And um, in that plan, we are specifically responsible or we've been requested rather to look at issues relating to prevention as well as to um, economic um, empowerment of women in, that has found themselves in this, in this situation as well as obviously men, because it's gender-based violence. And as a result, but the majority of persons that are affected are female, um, whether they are young people or children or persons with disabilities. So that's the first thing that we wanted to just emphasize in our concluding remarks is that we will work hard to ensure that we incorporate these issues into all the work that we have within the department, not just as it relates to the work that we do as far as gender um, uh, 
equity and women's empowerment is concerned. We also would like to say that the introduction of the amendment bills um, as discussed by the committee, um, basically it also is, an, it is a direct response to the strategic plan and it will strengthen the implementation of the strategic plan and it will enable us as government departments to um, essentially, if I can put it um, bluntly, take the strategic um, plan on gender-based violence more seriously. Um, and I, so I think that the bills couldn't have come at a more opportune time in terms of supporting the country's call for the protection of women, youth, and persons with disabilities that are, um, that are affected by this. And we obviously work very closely with the Ministry of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities as far as this matter is concerned. And then lastly, I think that in terms of the bill, um, as I indicated earlier, there are, no, there are no direct obligations to the department, but there are indirect obligations in the context that now electronic um, platforms and online platforms um, are being promoted and are being um, more um, emphasized, if I can put it that way, in terms of how uh, we must support uh, uh, victims and survivors of gender-based violence. And in that regard, the department therefore takes its obligation very seriously in ensuring that we support the efforts as far as those um, uh, obligations are concerned, especially around the, the national um, register um, and also with regards to the, the expansion of the offenses, also with regards to how the, um, the uh, in terms of, um, including an opportunity for a protection order to be to to be um, um, uh, developed not just by uh, the, 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 the 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 usual people in the in the past so in all of those areas there is an opportunity for us to enable it to happen faster and more effectively through the use of technology um, and then these are just um, some of the, the areas that we wanted to share but obviously, as the department, we, as the acting DG indicated earlier, we will continue to engage our state-owned um, companies to look at their specific strategic plans around how they will be supporting the the uh, the bill's um, implementation. But as I noted um, in my earlier in, uh, um, inputs, there are already clear um, um, areas where we uh, would like. The, the SOCs to provide support in, re, in regards to supporting the bills. And um, if I then can conclude by just saying that as a department, we, we, are, we are really grateful for the opportunity that we have to present to the committee today. And we also want to emphasize the fact that we are committed to ensuring that the role that the department has to play as far as ensuring that communications and digital technologies um, enables preventative programs to be successful. Secondly, enables reporting to happen more efficiently and effectively. And thirdly, to support um, survivors of gender-based violence in terms of um, the processes that they would need to undergo um, post the, the reporting of the, of the crime. Um, those are the three areas that the department would be um, highlighting as our key areas of, of work. And then lastly, also to empower or to provide power to the women, the young people and the persons with disabilities and children through skilling them with regards to digital literacy, with regards to how to utilize their digital devices to enable them to do all of the things that I mentioned earlier. So with that, I would like to end it there and thank the committee for this opportunity. And I think it's also very, um, it's very, um, it's, it's a great honor in the sense that we are doing the presentation on the 25th, which is the beginning of the 16 days of um, violence against, um, the combating of violence against women. And, and in that, we would also like to note that as a department, we work um, constantly around supporting the initiatives with regards to that through the utilization of technology because that is our mandate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Linders. Ms. Linders.
Um, I've noted the following members who would want to ask questions, make comments, and um, uh, Honorable Mfuken, Honorable Horn, Honorable Ngola, Honorable Velma Nivotrachen, Honorable Betenbach in that order, Honorable Mfuken, or Honorable Jelle. Thank you, Chairman, and thanks for the presentation, and Ms. Uh, DG and uh, Ms. Linda. Chair, I still want to go back to that uh, they didn't get to the briefing because we were expecting to hear that what are they saying with uh, the three bills as individual bills. And you look at the uh, concluding remarks. They are saying the president of the country launched the, uh, uh, the NSP we know on combating gender-based violence. And it further says that the department are obligated to respond to combating gender-based violence in their work and ensure that they are incorporate, they incorporate into their own implementation whatever mandates. I want to say that, Chair, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed because we cannot just get this paragraph that says uh, DCDT in support of the bills. What are you supporting? Firstly, you are telling us about the implementation. Everything that has been said, as I listen, Chair, is implementation. It's not for us now. We're expecting them to give an input on the three GB bills. Secondly, they are talking about the economic support, but they can't tell us what was the problem with the current domestic violence with economic abuse. The other thing they're talking about, public education, those are the implementation processes. We are talking about technology, we hear you, but we are not telling, telling us about uh, the online abuse, the disadvantage and advantages of things that we have seen there. You are not talking about human trafficking, but there's human trafficking. This is what we have observed. And as the department, what is it that you are going to do? Because you are supposed to communicate to the nation you are supposed to be using your resources to make sure that the poor, the old and the young, the rural and the urban get access to this information. You are not talking to us about the integrated justice system. What is it that you will do in that system to help other departments? You are not telling us about the national register of sexual offenses. Are you supporting it? And if you support it, what are you going to be doing? You are not telling us about the centralized orders. What are you going to be doing? Are, they, are you accepting them? And if you're accepting them and you're supporting them, what is it that you are looking at there? The mandatory reporting, it's, an, it's a ton, you know, it's, a, it's, it's actually something that is dividing everybody, you know, into the submission. What are you saying? I must say that, Chair, they didn't get the script. Everything that has been said is about the implementation. One wants to understand and respect Ms. Linda, you are understanding into the, everything that is there, but everything that has been planned here is the after. We want to know about now. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Honorable Mufuken. Uh, before I move to Honorable Horn, let me also acknowledge that the acting Director General of the Department of Justice and her team are also present with us, and Parliament, Ms. Lutz, is also present with us to hear what the Department of Communication is, uh, is saying about these uh, issues of domestic violence. And at some point, I would want to know from the both teachers whether the, they have been part of the drafting of the bills or are they commenting after the bills have been drafted? Honorable Horn. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, and thank you for that last comment because um, I uh, had the sense from, from certain portions of the presentation that the department of, of communications were unfortunately under the the impression that part of their brief for today is to to come and uh, influence the content of the bills. So in that regard, I think your your question is quite um, 
apt and, and, and relevant on behalf of the committee. I also want to say that I'm, uh, I want to add my voice to the Honorable Mofu King. And, and uh, since she has said a lot, I will, will stick to two issues. The one is that unless I understand it, do not understand it correctly, I think what we should hear from the Department of Communications is to what extent will they be willing and able through their programs to communicate and through communications educate uh, the nation about the new provisions in, in the three bills when they become law. So a, a, a big portion of the struggle we have in South Africa is that the fight against gender-based and sexual violence are hampered by the fact that victims are not always knowledgeable about the avenues available to them. And, and I think one of the reasons why we've asked this department to come here is to, to, to tell us to, in what way they would be able to assist in terms of implementation uh, of, of, of these bills when they become law by communicating and educating. But secondly, Chair, the, the other issue is that um, if I understand their presentation correctly and they talk about enabling the fourth industrial revolution, and I, obviously there can be long conversations and debates. Uh, uh, we can have long conversations and debates about whether one can force the fourth industrial revolution and whether one reacts to the fourth industrial revolution and ultimately in terms of their vision enables every South African to, to, to make use of the fruits of the fourth industrial revolution. So in that regard, I would have hoped that they would have told us that they are able to provide service points uh, and access to technology specifically for online processes throughout communities where people do not have, um, as a matter of course, access of their own to technology um, and the, the uh, processes or the new online platforms that will come with these bills. So to my mind, I, I would have hoped to, to learn from them that they would roll out access points uh, make available to the to the community as part of a broader initiative at or near police stations at the Zela care centers um, at our courts even uh, as part of, of education and communication uh, regarding the bills thank you Jay thank you very much on Rabangola. Mola, we can hear you. Honorable Mola, we can hear you. Can we move to Honorable Nivot Drachen? We'll come back to Honorable Mola. Uh, I, I, um, uh, 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 Chair, should yes, Honourable Wilma continue? Yes. Continue, Honourable uh, Nilbot Rahan. Okay. Good morning, everybody, and thank you very much, Chair. And good morning to the departments. And good morning to Petronella. This is Wilma Nyhodruchen using a sign language interpreter. And my interpreter's name is Dolphin. That's the voice that you're hearing. So thank you for the presentation. I would like to add to what my colleagues have said. I am also disappointed uh, because if I were a victim and I had to hear this presentation, 
I, you know, as a victim of violence, I don't think I would feel a sense of comfort or satisfaction from this department. And I would like to further say that you speak a lot about the programs, um, the programs that you will do, that you will complete. But we don't know what programs that are that are completed, that are currently available to support gender-based violence or victims of gender-based violence. We don't know what pro programs you have in relation to, in relation to gender-based violence, and there was no clarification about that. And then you know that I always talk about access for people with disabilities. It's ongoing. I have the convention, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of, Pers of, Rights of People with Disabilities. And the first clause is about accessing um, ac accessibility for people with disabilities. And during the lockdown period, um, inform there wasn't much um, access to information for people who are deaf and you know, who are deaf and, and have to hear about coronavirus. DEFSA had to take up that role to provide information and access for people who are deaf using sign language. Um, but there was no access provided. And a few weeks ago, um, there was a video from from NIMSA or from NIMISA and a deaf person sent me this video and they said they they want to know what's in the video but there was no access there was no subtitles there was no um, sign language interpreter so the deaf people couldn't access that video so the concern of subtitles or sign language interpreters in gender-based violence issues especially for um, the deaf victims of gender-based violence. Um, there's so little of it, and it really should be included much more. Even with the national broadcaster, SABC, um, there's much more that needs to be done in terms of uh, access to information about gender-based violence. And then during the process of the, of the bills, when they were drafted, the drafting of the bills, Actually, just after that, the public hearings that were were hosted, there were comments about online stalking, physical stalking, um, and the definitions related to that. But before the bill goes out to the depart, I mean, to, for public hearings, did the department make any comments? to to that um, to the bills. I mean, yes, you're now speaking about online stalking and, and such activities, but when the bill was being drafted, did you make any comment or contribution to the perhaps the wording, the definitions? Did you do it or not? And when the department has to educate, you know, educate children, perhaps about online cyberbullying, online bullying. I mean, during the lockdown, a mother of a deaf child told me that um, the school had to call in the parents because of online bullying. Online bullying, which was happening during classes that were held online. So what is the department doing to spread awareness, spread education to children in terms of things like that? And as the deaf community, we are incredibly disappointed about the education provided for deaf children like online. Isn't the Department of Communication supposed to assist Department of Basic Education in, in terms of those you know, online provisions? And then um, the minister spoke about uh, um, rolling out Wi-Fi infrastructure. We are concerned that in this bill, when it should be, when it is implemented, will the rural areas get access to Wi-Fi or you know this Wi-Fi infrastructure that's supposed to be rolled out? And how? will these people get access? I mean, the people in the rural areas do not have easy access to um, 
online, just online services. And now the bill's talking about online, doing predict, protection orders online and, and other such matters. How are the people in the rural areas going to get access? And, you know, the victims of gender-based violence should be getting easier access to all the provisions that are provided for in the bills. Um, I'll leave it at there. I'll leave it there, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, can we go back to Honorable Ngola before we go to Honorable Breitenbach? Is Honorable Ngola back? Yes, Chair. I hope the tree is better now. Yeah, yes, no, the tree is better. You have moved. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Chair. Uh, I think uh, uh, the speakers before me have covered a lot of uh, issues. Uh, it's just a few issues to complement what Honorable uh, Mofukeng, Horn, and uh, Velma uh, have, have, have alluded unto. The first of which uh, is the, the online tracking of perpetrators. It is common cause that uh, some of the GBV incidences start from social media. Has, has, has the department considered assisting us track the perpetrators uh, in the cases where GBV incidences, human trafficking and other related matters started through uh, the, the inboxing on Facebook, the DMing on Twitter and all that and all that. Have they considered that? Uh, are they able within their available resources to help us track those perpetrators uh, who are using the online platforms to perpetrate GPV. The second issue, Chair, is um, the, the, the administration of justice. Uh, part of the risk factors in some of the cases is the evidentiary documentation being lost uh, within the court administration process. The Department of Justice came at some point and made a presentation that they are considering moving towards a, a paperless uh, uh, administration of justice. Have they been able to engage with the Department of Justice? Would uh, there are known hotspots of GBV in the country. Within their budgetary resource available, have they considered installing cameras in some of the hotspots as piloting the prevention of, of, of GBV? Uh, that, that's all, Chair. That, that's all, Chair. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Glennis Breitenbach. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I've been uh, largely covered by the previous speakers. Um, I must say that I'm very disappointed with this presentation, and clearly uh, the point of it was lost. I'm not sure if it's the, they didn't get a proper brief or they didn't understand the brief or whatever the problem is, this presentation does nothing to inform us about the... Um, readiness to implement these bills. And um, I, I got uh, very little, if anything at all, from this presentation. And I say that with respect. Um, it's, it's a disappointing presentation and uh, it takes us no further. Um, we, we frankly may not as well not have had it. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Masepa Chayla. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, uh, also, thank you to the DG and uh, Ms. Linda for, for coming and making this uh, presentation. Chairperson, can I switch off my camera? It's also disturbing mm -hmm. me. In fact, this, yeah. That's fine. Just is. Please, Chair. Okay, uh, I think uh, some of the issues that I wanted to raise, uh, they have been covered particularly by uh, 
Honorable uh, Velma, on, when it comes to the issues of reporting uh, and education. But I want to uh, uh, also ask a question when it comes to, uh, we are reported about the, the danger of children being exposed to these issues on, online. But uh, if I can hear, what is the view of, of the department when it comes to parenting and also, you know, in uh, helping to educate uh, parents when it comes to buying these expensive gadget uh, to the little ones and, and, and those who are still uh, at, at school, because you find that it's not only those who are at the higher level, the high school, but also in the primary schools, and they use this gadget in front of their parents. Is there anything, maybe a comment that they can come up with on, 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 the, on, on that one? It's just a, in passing. But also on the issue of, I think you have, you have covered me on this issue of uh, the department and also the, 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 their relationship with the, the Department of, of Justice because I was going to ask a question as to what is their plan when it comes to uh, uh, working with other departments? Because to me, this department is key. They have to communicate. Uh, 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 communication is in their area and uh, communication is very important. We, we, we all know that if something, if people are not educated, if people are not communicated to any, any that their department is it's kind of a tool that is used uh, in assisting to reach for, for the community. But uh, I didn't hear exactly because they do say that they, they will be working with the, these other department, but I can't get uh, exactly how are they going to get to hold of those departments in terms of making sure that their work is coordinated. And, and communicated uh, in, a, in a unified manner chair. And, and also uh, earlier in the presentation, uh, oh, Ms. Linda also mentioned the issue of uh, coordinated structure within their department. Uh, kind of, it is the structure that will be dealing with these issues. I would say maybe in my own understanding that uh, it is the structure that will be uh, looking into those issues the issues of gender-based violence and, and making sure that there is progress in terms of work in that area. But I wanted to find out, Chair, that uh, who sits, according to them, who sits in that uh, a, a committee or structure and at what level? Because, Chairperson, my worry is that uh, departments have been uh, assigning people to these structures. And you find that these people are people who are not having an influence within the department. They just sit there and when they have to uh, go back and report, they are not listened to. And the information, it, it's just of uh, uh, not important and everybody uh, continue as, as they've been doing their things without taking notice of uh, uh, issues that are coming to that committee chair. Uh, that is the, the 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 issues because most of the issues like Chairperson, I said I, I was covered. I'm covered. Thank you very much, Chair. Well, no, thank you very much, Honourable Chair. Um, just before you respond, uh, DG and your team. Um, there is a lot of emphasis on the fourth industrial revolution um, from your presentation. But part of what is the challenge is that we have a violent society. And in this case, this violence is perpetrated against women, children, and elderly people. But generally, our society is very violent. Now, you, as part of your oversight, you have the SAPC, 
that you should be engaging because part of the problem is that our people are exposed to serious violence in terms of the feelings that are being flighted. Uh, not only by the SAPC, uh, but even by the others. And there is no indication because for us to be able to win this war against gender-based violence and violence in general, we have to re-engineer our society to a particular direction. Now, if you have all these feelings, whether it's under DSTV or it's under SAPC, uh, these violent, uh, violent uh, feelings, what value system are we instilling in society? And to what an extent are you engaging them? to ensure that ourselves, our children, watch films that are geared towards building a better society, not a violent society. Even if you look at the viewership um, of the films, I think even, I mean, I, I know it is not directly under control, but you could engage them, but because it's part of the industry that you have oversight of. Uh, most of the films that are under DSTV, women are being projected as drug lords, um, this generally violence, to be at the helm of being a drug lord is a sign of an achievement. Um, there are such feelings and they've got higher viewership, which brings me to that point that we need to re-engineer our society differently. And what is the department doing to ensure that we have the, uh, this, this conversation with the industry as a whole? Because the industry generally is, pro is promoting a view that to be violent, it makes you to be successful. Violence is sex. And the SAPC and the MNET and all those, they are buying those feelings. So they are encouraging that kind of a, that, that, that kind of a, that kind of a, that kind of a, a, a behavior. If for instance, you listened to the opening, the opening remarks in Gomorrah, um, 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 something to the extent that people, they, 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 they want this lifestyle, but because they've got no courage, which means they've got no courage to be criminals, therefore they won't get it. So what, what, I, what, what, what I, but there are a lot of people are watching that. What, 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 society are you, what society are you building? And I was expecting that as part of the, as part of the oversight function that you do, that there are serious engagements uh, with, uh, with, 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 with the industry in general as to what is their contribution towards um, eradication of violence and specifically gender-based violence. To what an extent have you engaged the, uh, your mobile industries to ensure that, for instance, um, the president has has ensured that there is this coronavirus uh, app what are the applications that can be downloaded free of charge that people who are victims of gender-based violence can use as part of the contribution that the industry would have, would have had to ensure that you don't need data because if your husband uh, is, is beating you up, you do have a cell phone, 
you do have a smart cell phone, but you can't phone because you have no data, which is part of the economic uh, inequalities that uh, uh, various members have raised here. It becomes a challenge. So broadly, to what an extent have you have you engaged the industry on that? And I think going back to, 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 to the first question, um, I do think that we were expecting a form of an operational plan that based on these clauses in the in the in the in the, in the gender based violence, this is to be our responses. This is what the SAPS did and the other departments to respond to the specific clauses that if, if this clause is passed, this is our this is our approach, this is our state of readiness, and we are not getting that. Um, I do think that uh, um, the, the department as part of the ministry, they have, they did see the, uh, the, 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 the draft bills, they went through the DG's, the DG's cluster and then they went to the subcommittee in cabinet and then they and the bills were passed by cabinet before they came before they came here. So it can't be an opportunity now to to critique uh, and to have uh, suddenly new views or new ideas when you had an opportunity to to input throughout the process. We don't accept that. We want government to act in an integrated form. This silo mentality, it's not good for service delivery. It's time consuming, it's time wasting. Over to you, TJ. Thank you, Chair, uh, honorable members. Chair, I will try to first start off with the responses that I'm on the call. I have Ms. Petronella Lindens and I have uh, Didi Jimashulog and Mr. Teho, uh, uh, who's our legal expert. I wouldn't like the committee to be under the impression that we were not consulted. We were consulted. And actually when, uh, when the presentation started and we're trying to set the context of where we're coming from, the DOC as it was, the Department of Communications had the following entities, had FPB, had SAPC, had GCIS, had Brand SA, had MTDA. And in so far as that side of, of, of the department as it then was uh, at, at GCIS, we were very much involved even on the cyber, on the cyber, uh, cyber security bill. And uh, the, the, the team here worked very closely with the Department of Justice. So I do not want to leave the meeting with the impression that we were not uh, con 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 consulted. And if it's the impression, uh, it, it, it is not uh, meant to be that way. The comment that has been made uh, around the issue around uh, technology, we actually, we, we welcomed it. Ours were saying that because we have now 11 entities and we recognize that some of the entities were not exposed to the work that is done by this committee. And when I say other entities, just think about it this way, I heard the questions by Honorable Nola around uh, installation of, uh, of, of CCTV cameras. As a department, those kind of things, we have to work with CETA. CETA has to advise ASEP as to how this has to be uh, implemented and uh, how ready it is. And that is what the context of where we are coming from. I know, Chairperson, for instance, just to your last questions that we are asking around um, the issues of, of the films, uh, we have the Film and Publication Board. I see even Honorable Nivolt here. Uh, she, she, she made a comment about it, but now I cannot see it. She, she, she wrote uh, here, Nivolt Drachen. Uh, she said, can I ask the role of the Films and Publication Board and GCIS on the fight against gender-based violence? The Film and Publication Board is still under DOC. They are actually the main driver of communications around online, online um online content, they are the main driver of educating children and vulnerable groups insofar as undesirable content. 
and insofar as gender-based violence. But they don't do this alone. Even today, Minister is there in Cape Town, Deputy Minister is there in Cape Town to actually showcase the work of FPB. FPB is a very small entity and it does rely a lot on, on, on partnerships. When I say partnerships, I'll make the example that uh, uh, Honorable Newport made around online and, and also the talks around uh, uh, during, uh, during uh, lockdown. We did receive the, the, the concerns that came from uh, the deaf community during lockdown. We set up a PMO just to respond to, to issues of, 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 of every vulnerable group in the, in the community. And then we found that in South Africa, unlike, for instance, if you are looking at international benchmarking, you do not have the actual caption as the president is speaking. That was the main concern that people had during uh, the, the speeches of the president and the ministers. And we did made a response and we said, look, at this point, our technology that we have does not allow that when the person speaks, the, the auto captioning is actually captured and momentarily. It does that when it's pre recorded. As a result, we said to SAPC, let us improve uh, moving forward. Then I know that the questions that we asked as well is, 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 is the question around um, to what extent did we, as, as, as the department, in influence uh, the bill. I, I think I, I have responded to that. And if my colleagues think that uh, there's a question that I have um, um, missed, they must uh, uh, say so. But that's why I wanted to talk about the work that we do with the Film and Publication Board. And that is why we say at the last sentence that we still want to come before this committee to actually say, this is how all of the entities are supporting the bills because the, bill, the bills are not only supported by the department, but we do that through our implementation, implementing agencies, which are the bills. Even the course that was spoken about, about NEMISA. NEMISA is trying new technology wherein they have this, uh, because you would recall before, we used to have physical classes. Now they are moving from physical classes to online class classes. And they are uh, slow the videos of how they are coming out but it's, it's because it only started during lockdown. And I'm not making an excuse, but I'm just saying we, there is this, we, are responding to, to, uh, to, we are responding to all the bills, but we are not responding alone. We are responding, uh, being supported by the entities. Hence, uh, uh, Honorable Vilma uh, actually knew uh, that this is the work that we do uh, with the Film and Publication Board. So Chair, I will ask uh, especially Tseho and, 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 and Petronella to respond to some of the questions in case I have missed any other issue. Because I was trying to say that we are doing uh, uh, public uh, education uh, as the examples that I was making. So uh, over to you, uh, Petronella and, and Tseho. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, this is Petronella Linders speaking. Um, I'd like to just uh, indicate that I think the acting DG has um, covered most of the questions, but just to um, uh, respond to some of the issues that was raised with regards to the programs that um, has been implemented or that are implemented in supporting um, issues relating to online, online um, abuse. I think that as the department, we have a overarching program that deals with child online protection that is about looking exactly at how um, children are being supported um, in terms of understanding the, 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 the risks when they are online, as well as the benefits of being online. And um, in this program, there is also there was a question around support to parents. Um, there is also a focus on parents in terms of um, helping them to understand how to participate and, and support their children in the digital environment, obviously age appropriate in, in relation to, um, because children uh, are um, defined as zero to, to, to 18 in South Africa. So obviously um, the, the program focuses on age appropriate interventions for um, for the parents as well as for the children. 
Um, and this we do in a coordinated fashion with other um, government um, institutions as well as um, private sector and also civil society. Um, then also just to indicate with regards to educating and raising awareness around what is available to um, uh, persons when it comes to the support that they can um, receive. I think uh, with regards to that, we have also um, implemented a number of interventions around um, working with, for example, a Childline Essay um, with regards to strengthening the work that they do in um, raising awareness around cyberbullying, as well as um, how uh, instances of cyberbullying can be reported. So that was just responding to the questions around what is it that we are doing or what is it that we have been doing in supporting um, raising awareness with regards to um, uh, victims of, of um, abuse. Then with regards to the issues raised in relation to um, the, the violent society and how we, we engage as a society, I think that um, the Acting DG has indicated uh, the role of the Film and Publication Board. And I think the chair was asking also around how do we engage our mobile operators and how do we engage um, the broadcasters. I, um, in, in that regard, I would like to note that we also have a, um, a program where we engage um, the, 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 the civil society and the stakeholders around understanding the various um, pieces of legislation and policy that governs what we view as, as, as society. And, and it's important to note that in the South African context, children are, are protected in terms of what they can view, but adults um, obviously have the right to view what they want to view. But um, having said that, I think the, the acting DG did indicate with regards to um, the work that the Film and Publication Board is doing in, um, in uh, monitoring what films do uh, get displayed um, to the public and, and, and they do the work in, re in regards to looking at that. And then also um, in terms of the questions that was asked with regards to deaf persons and, and um, how we have supported deaf people, I think, uh, or, or persons that has, that's hard of hearing or deaf. In terms of those uh, uh, programs, we have worked with um, schools for the deaf where we looked at providing them with information around how they are able to access um, the reporting platforms, how they can um, um, protect themselves should they be victims of, of, of abuse. Um, and then lastly, just to indicate, to respond to the question around the brief and do we work with other government departments. As the department, we are part of the um, integrated um, uh, uh, committee that the Ministry for Women, Youth and Children have set up in terms of working around um, issues relating to gender um, equity and implementing the national strategic plan. And in those processes, we have participated and we have um, provided inputs in relation to some of the, the issues that was raised. But I would like to say that we acknowledge the fact that what we have done might not be sufficient and it might not be um, in line with what the committee um, expects of us. And in that regard, we welcome all the comments that has been made by the committee in relation to the content of the presentation. And we will obviously review all of it in, in line with what the acting DG has said with our state-owned entities, as well as with other um, government departments that we work with in the area of um, gender-based violence, or rather supporting um, survivors of gender-based violence through technology. Um, yeah, I think I will end it at that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you very much. Any other responses? Chair, Wilma. Uh, before Honorable Nivot Drachan, I would want to satisfy myself that there are no other responses from the department. Um, I'm, I'm here, Chairperson. I'm here. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Honorable, Honorable Nivot. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, good morning, and, and good morning to the honorable members and colleagues. 
Chapasan am Tsukhopato Harabe from the Legal Services. Chapasan, I, I just want to indicate that uh, I've been involved in the process of uh, drafting the Films and Publication Bill. In fact, I've been working together with colleagues from the Department of Justice. So uh, the bill that we are referring to basically, Chapasan, it, it, it was approved by both uh, houses. Uh, uh, National Council of Provinces and also the National Assembly. It was signed by the president. I just only waiting for the president to determine the date in which it will come into operation. Just to be brief, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, one of the problems that led to make, uh, to establishment of the bill is that there were no enforcement mechanism that can deal with issues where someone has posted, has posted illegal content. The other one is that there were no online regulation that can easily protect children, even consumers, from harmful, undesirable. Maybe you must close your. This is low. Chaperson, just close button. your video. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. You'll indicate if I'm, I'm audible. Yes, like yes. I'm saying, the challenges that led to the promulgation of these films and publication is that there were no there were no adequate remedies that are available in the instances where someone has posted, has posted illegal and undesirable and even harmful content that affects the children. So if there was any illegal content on social media platform or what, there was no remedy for that. So there were challenges which led to that. So the aim of the bill, in short, that uh, uh, drafted Chairperson is to protect the children from the exposure of the online content, such as pornography, sex, violence, even the premature exposure that could have adverse effects psychologically and the, uh, on, on what's, uh, even on other behavioral aspects. So in other words, Chairperson, with that, it, the, the, the bill aims to decriminalize this online distribution of this content. Because now it's very difficult. If someone has posted something on social media, it's not simple uh, to get an action that will instruct that person to, to remove such harmful content. So that, 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 that is more or less uh, the intention of, of, of the bill. And we, even before the bill approved by the National Assembly, we were working together with the justice. Uh, I see my colleague, Saral from Justice is also here because they also gave us our comments that we also incorporated in our bill. So that to make it simple for them when they deal with the prosecution part of it, because one of the way it was, the, I remember there was child pornography that we had to align it, align it with their legislation so that they can simply uh, prosecute. But in conclusion, uh, Chaperson, uh, we also conducted socioeconomic impact assessment. The results of the socioeconomic assessment on the bill it reveals that the bill is going to protect the children from these online distributors of films and game. It's going to enable the law enforcement agencies through the bill to prosecute effectively the perpetrators of, of, of this. Even furthermore, the, 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 the victims of the revenge pornography and, and which in, in our view will apply to gender-based violence will have the recourse and mechanism in terms of the bill because they're empowered here through digitally to raise complaints. In fact, in the bill, we have established the enforcement committee that is going to sit and adjudicate on the complaints that is even going to monitor that, which in our view, Chairperson, I think it's applicable to the situation that we are currently facing. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Honorable Nevo Trachan. <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you for the responses. I'm not completely satisfied with the responses, but thank you nonetheless. I would just like to add to what the chairperson has asked with regard to the mobile um, operators. Um, when chairperson asked with regard to the mobile operators. Now, the president, when he notified the nation about this second pandemic, um, which he said that gender-based violence is the second pandemic. But coronavirus was obviously the first. Now, 
we there was a WhatsApp group where we can ask various informations or, uh, or some information with regard to coronavirus. Now, because gender-based violence is the second pandemic, isn't there, there's no WhatsApp for gender-based violence issues where we can assist or get help, or we can get into contact because that WhatsApp is a, is a fast medium. Now, everyone in South Africa has cell phones, not necessarily access, but they do have phones. Now, access to phones relating to gender-based violence, I think more, we need to look at what more can be done. So for example, right in the beginning, I, I used to be, um, since 1999, I was in the communications committee and right at the beginning, I said, a deaf person should be able to send an SMS for help. Like when you call the hotline for deaf people, they should be able to send a message. And that problem, nobody has responded to with regard to SMS. So I was expecting and I was hoping with coronavirus, more and more people are using WhatsApp, that it's more and more, th that people are more able to make video calls or, you know, if those services are currently there, why can't we make that, those resources available for GBV? Is there no way that we can find a way? Then, Chair, maybe for the committee to consider We've, we've heard a lot about um, the CETA. Um, the CETA is responsible for uh, electronic devices and communications and all of that, but we never got a presentation from them. So maybe if the, the committee can consider uh, getting CETA, what they are doing with, re with regard to resources in terms of prevention of gender-based violence. Um, then I forgot to add something with regard to the cell phones. Um, I, I don't make voice calls, obviously, but the cell phone has uh, an emergency call. You know, when your phone is off, you can make a, an emergency call. You can um, press SOS. But something like that for gender-based violence, an emer emergency call, can it be done? Has the department spoken with the different cell phone operators um, about things like that by using these emergency ways of calling when gender-based violence, gender violence happens. And I'm not satisfied with the issue of the subtitle and the captioning with the department's response, I'm not satisfied, but we'll leave it there. But I don't get access to TV. Um, if there's no subtitles, I always go to YouTube, right? The same program that's shown on TV, I check whether it's on YouTube and there are captions and there are subtitles. But I have that access. Many of our people don't have that kind of access and they depend heavily on what is shown on TV. We can't hear things that are on the radio, but if the same program is on YouTube, like Seven Alarm, you know, things like that, Muvangu, whatever, it's on YouTube, and it's subtitled there. Can't the department find a way to use the same technology for TV? I, kn I know you can because the technology has been improving for the past 20 years. It can be done. So can we look at something like that it's in the same way? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, um, Honorable Newport, uh, Department. Chairperson, uh, oh, that is the only follow-up. Thank you very much. Chairperson, yes, I hear the issue that has been raised by the Honorable Nicole. I just wanted to say, indeed, there is that technology. However, because you have a public broadcaster that is still on an analog system, uh, which analog system does not allow for that auto captioning at that particular point. But you would note that there is, for instance, for pre-recorded programs, they will have the subtitling, but it, for, for, for programming such as uh, the programs that happen at, at this particular point, uh, let's say news and the likes, they will not have that. And then for other programs such as the Seven Delan and other soapies that are happening on TV, 
they will only do the, the translation services that are available. But insofar as the technology, we even asked during this period of COVID with, uh, with Centec, the signal distributor. Centec actually said to us, because we're moving to, it is possible, but because we're moving from analog to the digital era, it is not actually because you only, it's not possible to just buy it. It's almost like on radio when you buy something for AM, knowing that AM is being phased out in South Africa. So we did ask that. Then the question on the issue of WhatsApp. So what we have done, Honorable Nibot, during uh, COVID, we've asked all departments that were impacted by COVID, such as Department of Health, Department of Education, uh, you name it. And we said, all the departments said, tell us your requirements from our sector. Basic thing, uh, application for numbers, application for emergency numbers, application for WhatsApp number, insofar as reporting the, the, the fake news and the things that were happening during uh, COVID. So uh, the departments will apply because it happens with one of our entities, which is ICASA. And then ICASA would say, yes, the number is available. No, the number is not available. So that is what we have been doing uh, from our side through the PMO and, and proactively assisted. Yes, I take the point that there are areas that we may need to, to, to improve on, but we did make, we're still making the offer that ICASA is there and when people do not know how to get to ICASA for numbers and the services that are offered, we will be doing that. Just share, just a very simple example that we did for purposes of, of, of COVID-19. The SA coronavirus website, for example, a lot of people do not know that. The SA coronavirus did not, uh, was not hosted by a government department. We had to invoke CETA to say CETA, the SA, because we wanted the SA coronavirus to be the first website that you see when you go into any domain name in South Africa. CETA, let's engage with the Department of Health so that this website is in, owned by a department of, it was owned by a third party. And fortunately, because domain names also belong within DCTT, which is dot, it's domain Z, dot Zna, the domain name South Africa belongs within DCTT. That took a while, but we managed to get it. All I'm saying, we do not have the, all the answers in, in, in one go, honorable chair members, but wherein we see an opportunity that we can assist and we can be able to say this is the this is the gap that is there. Chair? 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 Can you close your video? Your bandwidth. Can you close your video? Your bandwidth is low. Oh, thank you. So sorry, Pretoria problems. So thank you for that, Chair. <laughs> so Chair, uh, ju ju just I just wanted to, to to make the kind of because we have we have done even how we say how we are going to move forward this during this the, the, the post, 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 post COVID. So in terms of our engagements with the various uh, uh, government departments, in so far as what we are offering, when I say we, because it's not the DCTT, it's our entities as to what enabling environment can be uh, realized. And that enabling environment is, 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 is there. Hence the examples that are being made that we're saying SAPC is there, but we can only make it better, all of us, in terms of the, they're supposed to register their films to make sure that before you watch a film, they inform you. When you're watching the news, they tell you check that the, the, the video that is about to be shown is not uh, palatable for you to be watching it with children. That sort of, sort of a scenario has to be also be applicable when it comes to, 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 to the films. That, 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 that they show, and we have the film and publication uh, doing that. So on the actual programs, Chair, that is why I am saying, uh, to, I'm, I'm still uh, asking yourself and the committee to say, because of how we are placed as the department, we want to showcase what each and every entity has done in terms of readiness. And we want to show and say, this is what SCTA is doing. This is, and we're not saying they're perfect, and we're saying there is room for improvement, but this is the gateway to what they are doing at this point. Hence, we're emphasizing the whole issue of, 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 of why. I, there was a question, Chair, around Twitter and, 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 and all those people on Facebook. 
through FPB, we have a, a partnership uh, that we used uh, during COVID, where in, instead of waiting for somebody to do something wrong, the moment we learn that a Mr. A Mr. Uh, Mashalogu has done uh, something wrong, one thing, we would just write to Facebook. Facebook will just take it down. Because remember, Facebook, we cannot stop a person before they do something. It's more of a relation person. Take it down the moment we see it. Take down the fake news. Take down the, 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 the rape that is being shown on, on, on that video. Hence, we created a, a, a platform uh, that is, is, is a WhatsApp platform. And then we realize our weaknesses and during COVID, and we partnered with civil society. And we said, let's partner with civil society because they have a strength in areas that we do not have a strength in, in terms of monitoring what is happening online, because we were not uh, uh, proactively that ready in terms of uh, monitoring uh, a fake news. And we made that partnership until today, Chairperson, whilst we differ on a number of issues, we agree on one thing, face fake, fake news, disinformation, and not undesirable content in our, on our, on our, on our, on our, on our social media pages in South Africa. So that is what we are doing, Chair. Yes, we are uh, ready to, to improve, but that is, uh, at this point, Chair, I just wanted to leave the committee with that, that there is this work that we're doing as the CDT, um, and we can showcase that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, thank Thank you, DJ. Uh, we would discuss that as part of our programming because, as you would know, that our, the year has come up to you have made of showcasing all your entities and what they, how they are for the implementation of the three GPV bills. Uh, we will discuss it. We will revert back to you uh, as soon as we are done with the discussions. But it will obviously not be this year, it will be next year, which would give you enough time. So do we decide that we would want to invite you back to, to coordinate with them? Because our expectations was that as the parent department, you would coordinate with all of your entities and speak uh, on behalf of the entities.
the Friday's ones, maybe let's try and squeeze them before we attend and really do address the issues that Honorable President uh, uh, is raising. Because the Section 25 committee uh, is an important committee in Parliament, we all know, and all committees are important, especially if they are properly scheduled. Now, we cannot all, we cannot in good conscience say to members, don't go to your prior arrangements on the basis of something that has not even been tabled. But I, 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 I was saying to, 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 to the secretariat, because they've asked for Friday, we are hoping that they, they, would, they, they would table by then. Let's do it by Friday because we, we thought that every port is going to be available. But for the fact that they have not yet tabled, I don't think that we should hold other, pro other portfolio committees to ransom. Um, it's something that we should continue uh, deal with. I think we should continue deal uh, with, with, with it and they will really have to explain what happened. So my, my view, members, uh, is, is that uh, maybe the Friday's meeting should not proceed, but we, we look at, we look at uh, next week uh, as to how do we ensure that we, may, uh, we have a date that is fixed so that people can plan properly. Um, um, as much as Honorable Breitenbach hates uh, inconsistent uh, programs, I hate them more. And I always feel very bad if there, there is a need to do counseling and a, a program keeps on chopping and changing. I just hate it, I don't like that because you, it just communicates something to people that you don't respect their own time and you don't respect even yourself. I, re I really do not like it. I don't like it. I don't like programs that keep on chopping and changing. But we have been having situations that are really imposing themselves on us. And we have to, I think we have to be firmer than we are to ensure that people know uh, that uh, there the, the are consequences for not meeting deadlines. But in this case, in, the, in this case, uh, part of the problem was that the Office of the Auditor General did not finish on time to audit, to audit them. Um, but can we can can we suggest? Uh, in fact, can we come back to members by tomorrow um, as to a proposed date for 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 uh, for, for correctional services? Is that acceptable, members? Yes. Yes, sir. Are we all fine with that one? Yes.
Thank you very much. And then coming back to the issue raised by Honorable Breitenbach, I will go back to the day I was elected as the chair of the committee. Honorable Horn raised an, an, an issue and we committed ourselves that we will ensure that it happens in the manner in which he raised it. He said we must ensure that correspondence that come, members are served timelessly with that correspondence. So there is no correspondence that is hidden from members. I, do, I, 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 I think uh, Honorable uh, Horn, I, if it's, it's my recollection of what you raised. Absolutely, Chair. Your recollection is spot on. Yes. So, so there is no correspondence that would come, um, especially that affects the working of the committee that I will not bring to your attention. Um, um, and this is what we have done. With the secretariat, we took a decision that we have to ensure that members received this information. With respect to the quality that the letter is unsigned, and the, it's a spreadsheet, it's not the CVs that were requested. Um, I want to assure members that the section that governs this process, I think section 83 or 82 or 82 subsection 3H, which says that the appointment of the four members must be in consultation with the committee. We will live with the letter and the spirit of that act. We have a responsibility in terms of that act that when we agree, because it requires of us that there has to be a concurrence we are equally responsible in the, man, in the same manner as the minister is responsible. If for instance, we appoint or we concur to the appointment of Makwanesha to be in that council and five months down the line, we find it is found that Makwanesha is is, 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 has criminal record, we would have abdicated our responsibility. We would have, we, we, we would be found to be in dereliction of duty. There is no way that parliament can concur to something because we are using a power of the people given to us to say we agree. And that cannot come without application of mind. That can't happen. Now, the application of mind means that every information that has to be at your disposal for you to make that decision has to be at your disposal. You cannot apply your mind from the air. If this information does not come forth, the committee cannot concur. Simple as that. The committee cannot concur. This is the power that has to be used by a committee. Uh, it's a power given to us in trust. And the people of South Africa are expecting us to use and apply ourselves judiciously to our work. There is no way that we are going to make decisions on the basis of information that is insufficient. 
end. Because there is no way, there is no way that we'll be able to justify that in any other forum that we just rubber stamped something when the act is specific that we must concur. And the meaning of concur, it means that there has to be an agreement. And you can't agree to something that you do not understand. You cannot agree to, to something that you do not understand. We have to take the power given to us by the people of South Africa seriously for us to be taken seriously. Unless we get proper information, I don't see us agreeing to any of the or uh, to anything uh, without information, without proper information being given to us. And we would not use in consultation and after consultation interchangeably. They are not the same, and they will not be the same. I think, honourable members, uh, it's 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 that is the explanation. That is how we we uh, I, I see I, I see uh, I see. I'm not sure whether other what is the view of other members. Um, I agree with you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, are, we, are we all fine, members? Is there a difference? Yes, sir. again. <laughs> no, he has moved to the crawl now. There are a lot of cows <laughs> around him. Honorable Mola? Yes, Chair. Uh, did you raise your hand or did you want, did you want, to, did, did you want to speak? No, no, Chair, I was, I was saying what, what you have just outlined uh, is giving us direction on how we're going to deal with the matters that are raised by Honorable um, Brayton. Okay. I just came to, to agree with what you are. Back under the tree. Honorable Ngola, can you move from that tree? Okay, there is Honorable Breitenbach's hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I also just wanted to inquire on an unrelated matter. The um, Grant Thornton report that we requested from Justice, I think today is the last day of the uh, deadline that you gave them. Uh, can you tell me whether we've got that report or have we still not received it? We, we said two weeks, ne? I think you said one week. We said, we said two weeks. Uh, we said two weeks. Uh, two weeks, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think the, the DG is the DG still around? Is the DG still around? No. Okay. So in the absence of a contrary view, can we agree members that this is how we are going to process the matter? Yes. So we will come back to you on the possible date next week for correctional services. And if we don't get satisfactory information on the, on the council, we will not process it. And um, in fact, I was, uh, it's one thing that I just forgot to say. I was further advised that um, the, law say, as the law stipulates that relevant committees, so it is not only us, it should also be the NCOP uh, committee. Uh, so thank you very much, honorable members. So we will meet uh, next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.